Yes, sir. Pass. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Wrong line. Please. Ready to go on? Yep. We're ready. We're live. We're ready to go. All right. You're on. Amen. Welcome, KCWG, the Truth listeners and Facebook Live listeners around the world. This is Truth and Love Ministry International with my beautiful wife, Prophet Gina Guy Warren, and Pastor Brian, Mister Unbreakable Warren. Woo-hoo! <laughs> We're excited to have you guys all on right now. We are excited. Yeah. This show is going to be amazing tonight. Uh, we have uh, some very, this is part three, part three of our uh, Contaminated Finances series. And um, my wife has a lot of talk, lots to talk about tonight. Guys, I'm, I'm here to assist, intercede for her. I pray that you guys do the same thing because this is a serious, serious message. Yeah, so, yeah for sure. Right? I'm not going to waste any time. We're going to jump right into it. Yeah, I mean, we like to have fun with all this. How many of you guys were... Uh... We're on live Facebook or um, on K- uh, watching the, excuse me, listening to KCWG last Thursday. Pastor so and so came on with his money suit. You know, we like to have fun with it, Pastor Brian, because I mean, it's a serious message, but we have to find a way to get to our listeners by teaching through another parable. Even, um, I think it was at last, Lance Wall now. Which one of them got on there and said, Where's all the, yeah, Lance. Yeah. He said, where's all the Christian comedians? I thought that was pretty prophetic, Brother Lance. Uh, hello, we're right. Hello. Hmm. Pastor so-and-so is right here. Pastor so-and-so. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, my wife wants to, she wants to jump in front of me a little bit today, but. It's uh, been a hard there's one. There's something in the spirit right now, guys. I'm just, I'm like in warrior mode, so I'm, I'm just so, so ready to do this. And uh, guys, it's, it's going to be a. Well, we just need to explain to the listeners. It's been a very difficult, like we've just been under massive, massive attack. You know, we're teaching on contaminated finances. This message is the key to many, many problems in the church right now. And so obviously you can imagine what we've been going through. Uh, Yesterday or day before yesterday, I couldn't even see. My eyes, I would almost go to the extent to say they were almost bloody. I mean, they were so swollen from the allergies in this region and um, I couldn't even see. I had to shut everything down the office. I couldn't pray. I couldn't read. I couldn't work on my computer. I couldn't write. I couldn't do anything. And it was, it just, it just shut me down. And um, so three major areas, we've been sincerely attacked. So we really appreciate, but that's not going to stop us, but we sincerely appreciate you all writing in and praying for us, interceding for us. So if you're watching and listening the first series, the first message was contaminated finance and church corruption. Three areas that ISIS has advanced. Why hasn't the church? It's all up on YouTube, you know, on our channel, Truth and Love Ministry International, Prophet Gina Guy Warren. That was part one. And then part two last Thursday was judgment has arrived in the house of God. Heads up, priests. Everybody in authority, heads bow down or heads are going to be removed. You know, heads are about to roll. Mm -hmm. Major changes are coming. So we all know that James Comey, FBI director, former FBI director, was removed. Fired. He was fired. fired. Fox News declared, if anybody heard, they said heads are being removed. Yeah, they said there was a few things off of his head. I mean, they off they, of his head. Yep. There was a bunch of comments about uh, Comey getting his head taken off. So, and that was our preach for it. Uh, well, that was Thursday, and this uh, he was fired. Was it yesterday or the day before, Pastor Brian? Mm-hmm. I think it was been two days ago. Yeah, Thursday. So you know, within five days, um, this is confirmed in the news, and uh, so James Comey, you know, heads. But this is we know from the White House, the courthouse, to the church house. Heads are being removed. Anybody that's prophetic understands that heads are symbolic of authority. So those in the pulpits, you know, priests in the pulpits, God's getting ready to move your head. And you may think, oh my gosh, that sounds so dramatic. Well, you know, what they're doing to the people in the church is pretty dramatic as well. You know, it's cursing people throughout the body of Christ. We've we've watched, you know, just major, major curses from their finances to their health, their marriages, Everything going on in the church body, you guys. And so don't tell me God is not taking this all seriously. So to yes. Are you saying the the ones that have been the ones that have been corrupt? The the people that have been corrupted in the church, your heads are gonna be removed. Yeah, the wicked, not the weak. 
wicked versus weakness. You're operating in witchcraft and which we're going to teach tonight to let, and all yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. we're we're also going to learn if we're operating in that as well. Right. We all have to look at our own hearts, and <clears throat> hence the title of today's message: How are we robbing God? How are we robbing God? It's not the money. Our own hearts hold the key to prosperity, not the preachers. What? Say what? <laughs> our own hearts hold the key to prosperity, not the preachers. Removing domestic deities. I'm going to go into what all of this is going to mean, you guys. So again, you've got to listen to the other two messages. They are on the Truth and Love Ministry page for those who are watching Truth and Love Ministry right now. And you want to, excuse me. I, the allergy is just so bad, you guys. If you, But thankfully, my eyes don't look like what they did the other day. Um, I still would have came and preached with ice packs on my eyeballs. But um, but what you need to do is go back and listen to the... Their messages are saved on Truth and Love Ministry. But if they're listening on KCWG, you can go to YouTube. you got to do that. So we ended, Pastor Brian, last Thursday with 1 Peter 4.17. Now, we need to write down the scriptures, if you don't mind... Uh, were the, the context of this whole uh, precept about contamin contaminated finances is actually in Malachi 3, 1 through 18. We also want to write down Malachi 1, 7 through 8, 1 Peter 4, 7 through 19, 17 through 19. And I want to get through this, you guys, because um, there's a lot to teach. And we we're really late on KCWG. We're about 15 minutes behind. So I've got to really go fast here. I talk really fast. So right, make sure you guys have your pen and paper, guys, because you're going to hear a lot of uh, information that you need to write down and go back and research yeah. yourself. Yeah, and Acts 5.4. So those are all the verses. So everything I'm teaching is in the Bible. It's scriptural. Uh, but today we are going to focus. We are going to just kind of hover over verse 5 of Malachi 3. Okay, is everybody ready? So first of all, what, like I said, we ended last Thursday, Brian, on... 1 Peter 4, 17, for it is the time destined for judgment to begin in the household of God. For it is the time. And as a prophet, I'm telling you right now, it is time. I mean, we've seen it in the White House. We're watching it all throughout the courthouse. Are you kidding me? All the judicial systems, right? We're all the levels we're seeing it happen. And now get ready to see this take place in the church house. The church house is God's baby. I mean, this is his baby. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So this is where it is. I got the Holy Ghost chills right now when Amen. I said that. Amen. So it is destined time for judgment to begin in the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not respect or believe or obey the gospel of God? If it is difficult for the righteous to be saved, if I could hear brakes hit, like I would hit the brakes right there. For if it's difficult for the righteous to be saved. Why is it difficult for the righteous to be saved? I thought we're just all saved. Okay. So when I began the mission statement for Truth and Love Ministry International, God began to tell me, you know, to go out and, and, and you'll read the mission statement. I want to go through all of it right now. But I asked him, what about the church? And he told me, well, 90% of the church isn't saved, Gina. So, all right. So if it's difficult for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the godless and the sinner? So we already know the godless and the sinner are doomed to hell. They're already doomed to hell if they do not surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. You just can't like jump up through the birth canal and get inside of the womb at the last minute and say, I'm your baby. Mm -hmm. You just can't enter in through portals that are unacceptable. You hear what I'm saying? Artificial you got to come through the seed. Which is the seed of Abraham, which is the seed of David. Ab Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which is Jesus Christ, okay, God's own son. So the, it, it's going to be difficult for the unrighteous, people that live an unrighteous, unholy life, to be saved. So, what about the believers in the church, those who are confessing to be Christians? So, here's what I want to explain judgment. Everybody says the word judgment, don't judge. I'm so tired of hearing people say, don't judge, that's God's job. That's really stupid to write that because you obviously don't know God's word. So get off of Facebook, get off something, get off of whatever you're on, your high horse, because I don't know where you're grabbing that kind of scripture from. But judgment, the actual definition is the ability to, to come to a sensible conclusion. Don't judge, that's God's job. No, it's our job to come to a sensible conclusion. And I'm concluding that the church is a mess. It's my conclusion, according to my calculations, the church is a freaking mess. 
and it's full of contaminated seed. I'm a witness to it too. The, the pool, the seed pool is absolutely contaminated. And that's why we are not seeing um, our, our, our seed that we're putting into the ground uh, coming forth and, and seeing a harvest from it. So it also means misfortune viewed as a divine punishment. So I think that's generally the, the context that people see judgment. It's divine punishment. Well, that is true because God's come to divinely punish and judge the church. But first, he's coming to actually bring sensible conclusions. He's saying, people, will you sensibly conclude why you're broke? Why I'm not a liar and you are? Why you're in poverty and I'm not? I'm God who owns a cattle on a thousand. So, so we have to ask why, what's going on? And the pastor so-and-sos of the church that are bringing all this contamination, we dealt with that. That's in part two. Just go back and watch it. But what I want to deal with today really is the crux of the message that God has given me about um, contaminated finances. And we're going to go right into it. We're going to hover in verse five. Number one, I'd like all of our team unbreakables, those who are listening, if you're listening by KCWG, you have your notepads already. Um, I'd like you to write down verse five of Malachi three. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. Now, then is a prepositional phrase. It bridges the past statement to the next one that's going to come. So it's the, the past to the pre, the pre to the post. So then is a bridge. I can't get into the previous scriptures. We don't have time for it. It's in our last two messages. So if anybody's going to take out of context what I'm preaching in this one, please don't do that. You need to listen to all of it in context. One, two, and three. Yes, you need to listen to uh, message one, message two. Now this is message three. And so in message three, I will draw near to you for judgment. Now, now God is dealing with all of our hearts. He's already sent the messenger to come and divide as a consuming fire, as a purifier soap, as a fuller soap. We spoke about that all in the last message. Now he's saying, I'll be swift witness against sorcerers and witchcraft. Okay, now when we talk about how did you rob God? I think it's a doing a disservice, my love, to preach to the church. You've robbed God. How? In tithes and offerings. When they've been tithing and you're telling them that they're robbing God. But the people are saying, but how am I robbing? Because I've been tithing. It, so is that any of our listeners today? Any of our viewers? Are you saying, well, wait, how are you saying I've robbed God? I've been tithing. I've been giving offerings. I need to move you over. So, but I'm going to explain to you how... All of us or some of us have actually been robbing God and we haven't seen the blessing in our tithes and our offerings, okay? Today, we can conclude the matter. We can go before the Lord, ask for forgiveness because when you know the truth, the truth will set you free, amen? amen. So now I want to know the truth of what's going on. Sorcerers, I'm going to be quick to come against sorcerers. Now, remember, Malachi 3 is about money. Don't tell me it's not. Everybody read chapter 3. Everybody should have been reading that and studying it already. That's the context of this message. It's not about worshiping. It's not about church. It's not about, you know, your gifting. It's, it's about money. It's about robbing God in money. So we go to the previous verses before the robbing of God and we read, what is God showing us? How did we rob him? Well, it says sorcerers and rich witchcraft. Sorcery and witchcraft, rich, witchcraft is a magical influence. This is what witchcraft that's, is. That's prophetic, witchcraft. Oh, that's funny. Thank you. Retro, retro, retro. I witchcraft. said richcraft. Richcraft. You caught that. Yes, I did say, I said richcraft. Hashtag richcraft. That's a great hashtag. Hashtag, Pastor Gina quotes, richcraft, right? So richcraft rich is thing. witchcraft involved in the money. Richcraft is witchcraft involved in the money. God, say that five times. See if I can do my head. Witchcraft is witchcraft of all the money. Okay, but sorcerers and witchcraft, it's a magical influence. Here's what the Lord spoke to me, what witchcraft is. Witchcraft is control. You can call it a Jezebel spirit. You can call it whatever you want. But sometimes when we call things something, it deflects the focus off of us. That's witchcraft. That's a Jezebel spirit. And it's easy to take the focus off of us. Amen. But what if witchcraft is in our hearts? Okay, again, the title of this message, Our Own Hearts Hold the Key to Prosperity. What if I have witchcraft in my heart? What if I have sorcery in my heart? 
Well, let's figure out if that's in any of our hearts right now. Amen. Can I get an amen? Is everybody ready to find out if that's us? Mm -hmm. Here's how we know. Control. This is one that appears to be the only issue and contamination on the pulpits today. But as you're going to see, I'm going to teach all of us that there are other areas of contamination as well. But control is the fear of losing something. Does anybody fear losing anything when you give? You are then operating in witchcraft. Oh, dang. Now I just took it off of the Jezebel spirits and off the pastor so-and-sos and all the false teachers. And now I put the magnifying glass on us. Now we have to ask Gina. I have to ask myself, Gina, are you in any way operating from your heart in witchcraft or sorcery? Gina, are you controlling in any way in your giving? Are you fearing that you're going to lose something when you give? Obedience is greater than sacrifice. 1 Samuel 15, 23. I think I might have forgotten to give that scripture at the beginning. For rebellion is as serious as the sin of divination, fortune telling. And disobedience is as serious as false religion and idolatry. Hold on. And teraphim. What did I just say? I didn't say seraphim. Whoop, whoop. Those are angels. I said teraphim. That's the opposite. Fortune telling is as idolatry as teraphim. Household good luck images. I'm getting ready to come into some of your houses right now. I am getting ready. Knock on the door. Who is it? I'm asking permission to come in. Spiritual parents ask for permission to come into your home. So now I'm giving you the ability to turn this message off. See, I knock at the door. And if any of you answer the door... And ask and seek, then you will find who? Him. Who's him? Jesus Christ. He's right now knocking at the door of your homes. You may want to close the door because you may not want to hear what I have to say. Because you may not want to actually clean house today. You may want to keep your teraphim a little longer in your home. You may want to hold on your household good luck images. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you. Now, listen. I'm going to share about my home. My home, when people came into my home, God is my witness. And many, many witnesses that have been in my home and the people that are still with me will attest to what I'm about to say. They would walk in the front door and actually almost fall out under the power of God. They could open any drawer, open anything in my home, and know that the house was holy. I'm not getting weird on anybody and I'm not getting religious. I'm going to talk about Gina. I'm going to talk about why I've been able to hear from the Lord and have so much peace in my home. And I'll tell you why. And then in my house, everywhere you looked, everywhere you looked, your eyes beheld something. You did not behold teraphim. You did not behold deities. Okay, why did I just say the title of this message, Removing Domestic Deities? Domestic Images. Things that you call good luck or good memories that actually have attachment to someone else's memories or demonic strongholds. I know I'm getting deep here because you're not hearing me, witchcraft, Jezebel spirit, we bind you in the name of Jesus and we cancel out every assignment of the Jezebel spirit. Oh no, you're actually hearing me come into the doors of our own hearts today and asking us, what is in your home? Every detail is either going to bring deliverance or peace of God's presence in your home. Everything in your home represents something. You're either extremely boring and you have no color. You're extremely closed up and your house will show how closed up you are. Your house will look show how open you are or how cluttered you are. Your house will show how cluttered your heart is or your mind. Now, I'm probably offending a lot of people that are watching right now. But when you go to a home designer, because maybe you don't really know how to design your home and God gave you this beautiful home, but you really aren't good with curtains, tie backs, window coverings, decorations, colors, borders, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know, you, you may not know how to do all of that. And so what do you do? Get offended at someone that does? No, you go and hire them. Guess what? I'm not a hireling. I'm free. You do not have to pay me for this information today. I am actually going to design your home. 
and your heart for free today. You don't have to pay me to do it. Isn't that awesome? I'm going to be your home designer and I'm going to de help you decorate your home. So I'm going to say right now, your home either holds things that are, are major attachments and that actually hold demonic spirits or memories. And those memories are going to trigger things in your home. Your black walls or your red walls are going to trigger anger, fire, lust in your home. Do you understand that heaven's all about colors? Okay, I could go so deep into this message. Literally, literally, I'm going to, you know, however we set this up, I'm going to be, I'm going to be teaching um, this message and conferences where I can actually take the time and camp out on this because I'm really going to teach you what God has shown me. The literally the details of my home, everywhere you sat, every piece of utensils that you picked up, every plate, every cup, every candle, everything had to do with something that God spoke to me to put in my home. Every throw rug. I'm not kidding you. I placed rugs in, in front of, um, uh, in front of uh, my guest bed so they could leave the bed and go straight to the carpet on their face in prayer. I have so much to teach the body of Christ about this. Yeah, someone said flip or flop. You're right. Pastor Brian and I should have uh, the, the television show flip or flop spiritual style, yeah. right? I could go into your home and design your house. And if you allowed me and didn't get offended, then you go, oh, I didn't mean it by that. Or I didn't say that. And you just listened and you allowed the designer to walk through and you'd go, wow, I never thought of putting that color there when someone walked in because I didn't know that color triggers this. I didn't know about that fabric between your fingers would trigger that. Do you not know the Ark of the Covenant was built? The Queen of Sheba, I'm totally going off into something that's not even in my notes right now. So God has given me some new things right now. Yeah. I'm reminded, Pastor Brian, the Queen of Sheba came into Solomon's uh, court. She was so wealthy. She was like, oh my God, do you know what the first thing she noticed? And somebody please put the reference when the Queen of Sheba in, is it in 1 Samuel? And when, or Chronicles, oh my gosh, I can't remember right now, but someone's going to get it. And when the Queen came into Solomon's court, the first thing she noticed was how his servants were dressed, Brian. Now you might think, oh gosh, that's so not cool. That's so, um what would you say? Materialistic. Materialistic. But she noticed how they were dressed. She noticed the fabrics that were hanging, the curtains that were hanging in, in his courts. You know, people used to say that to me. Oh my gosh, I love the royal sheer that's in this room. Or I noticed the covering that you had when I switched on the light switch. I noticed the copper and it made me think of this. And I wanted to go, duh. I put it there because God told me it would trigger this, this, or that when people came to my home. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a, it's a prophetic gift. Thank you. Second Chronicles, probably it, it's, it's a gift that God gave me. And so I could do it in the natural and I could do it in the supernatural. So I'm a, attempting to clothe your hearts right now. I'm attempting to remove the sorcery and I'm attempting to remove the, um, the witchcraft from all of our hearts. You know, if you are going to control and not allow me to speak on this, then just turn the camera off and turn turn the radio off and go listen to Kiss FM instead of KCWG The Truth. Mm -hmm. Go listen to Ryan Seacrest and go go listen to, you know, the the, you know, pop news and what's happening on the pop news and E news and go ahead and listen to all that. But you know what? I've got some E news for you right now. I'm getting ready to to teach you to get elevated to your prosperity level. And the only way you're going to get elevated, God cannot bring you to the next level of finances if your home is contaminated. Mm -hmm. Because you know where the money is going to go? You're going to buy more things in your home that actually represent the world, or you're going to bring deities into your house that are actually going to bring our, our worldly things and that are not going to, um, going to, you know, honor the name of the Lord, but you're going to go into, you know, different art shops or antique antiquities. You're going to bring on antiquities from like German or antiquities from, you know, bellies or, and you're going to bring stuff into your home and go, Oh, look at this, this candlestick that I found. And it totally has demons attached to it. I'm attempting to teach you guys something that God has taught me and the glory of God had falls had fallen in my home and every people would be in the gym, in the garage, 
falling out into the uh, and into the Holy Ghost. Brian, we are literally camping out on number one, and I thought we would probably go through all of them today. But this is so serious because so much. we go into yeah. people's homes all the time and we see things and we don't want to offend them, but I can feel something attached to it or I can feel the dreary colors or the drabness and you can just feel the personality, the vibe in the home. Do you understand what I'm teaching? I want your house to be a house that you can house the nations and you can bring people in and, and God can say, listen, take $10,000 and design a game room. Because I want you to bring all the kids into your house and from the from the neighborhood. And I want them to play in your home. But he can't do that if you bring the fabrics and, and you put, you know, things up on the wall that are worldly. And you're like, okay, Lord, I've got the game room. But the sticks that you bought were actually, you know, carved by some demonic person. I, I want you to learn how to pray over things in your home. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being patient with me, Brian. I kind yeah, of camped out there. There's a lot of stuff just stirring. I mean, yeah. God gives me all this prophetic stuff while I'm sitting here and she's speaking, so I'm just holding on to it, giving it the right moment to speak out and, and say some things. But uh, God showed me a couple things the other day when her, when my wife's her eyes were just so irritated. Oh, I couldn't see. So irritated. Oh. Like she's just, she was literally just, she couldn't even stand it. So you guys imagine if a piece of sand or something gets in your eye and you, it's just you got so many nerves in your eyes. And they just, yes, they, so many nerves. You in can't your even eye. think. You can't even think straight. So this was going on the other day, and the Lord, He just reminded me how sensitive my wife is, not just in the, I mean, to physical things, but to the spirit as well. And um, and I know if she's super irritated or something is going on, and it, it's there's a reason to pay attention to that. So the the Holy Spirit told me, you know, she is. It's it's time. Her eyes are irritated because it's time to to take the blinders off our eyes and speak out what, what we're seeing as well, not in the physical, but as, as well in the spirit. So, you know, if we were invited yes. to your home and we had to, if you gave us permission to speak into your life, we're not going to hold back anymore. If, if life, they give us permission. Life yes. is too short, guys. Yes. Things, thing, things are happening too fast now. And life is too short to, to not tell you the truth. Yes. To not speak truth yes. into your life. Yes, we want them blessed. We don't, we got, you know, a hardcore trainer, a, a military drill sergeant, um, somebody on the front lines, if you're in war, is not going to sit there and tell you, oh, put your little head down, please. He's going to tell you, get your freaking head down. You're going to get your head shot off. He, he might even call you a couple of names, okay? Oh, because, he will. Because he's not going to. Only Christians don't He doesn't do want you to die. Yeah. But he's not, he doesn't care if you're offended. He's there to save your, your life. life, and we're here to save your life. Amen. You allow us to, to listen. You watch the broadcast. You Some of you sow, some of you don't. That's between you and God. But we're here to uh, tighten you up, yes. clean you off, dust you off, and make you the best person you can possibly be. I'm going to tell you what. I was a, not a good person before Gina came into my life. I'm going to go real back real quick to my story and just tell you. I wanted to be the best Christian that could possibly be, but there was no way I could do it by myself. And she had, the Lord had sent my wife to clean me up. And the first words that the Holy Spirit spoke to me when I never met her in person was, she's coming to clean you up. And I was like, oh, dang, like she's going to, that's a, that's a, that's a tough word for some of you guys that aren't doing the right thing. Yes. If somebody's coming to clean you up and you're yeah, not, yeah. And, and you know, there's some dirt on you and you're going to get exposed it's it's gonna be it's gonna be painful. Yeah, I had a prophetic dream last night, and part of it was, um, you know, a woman was like standing like this, and and uh, you know, when we train people, the first thing we do is, is you know, just ascertain their uh, their uh, balance and their coordination, so we don't give them something that makes them fall and hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. So, kind of one of the first things I would do with a client is. Right hand up, let you know, make them do this this kind of walk. Right hand up, left uh -huh. you know, like that. And and if they start to do left hand and left leg, yeah. right hand and right leg, I know okay, I need to help them out with a little bit of um, not balance, but coordination. Yeah, their coordination. Uh -huh. I need to help them coordinate. So you know, I'll know I'm attempting to write the three D workout book and, and get through this so we can get it published. But and some of you are receiving, some of you, all of those who have financially given to us. 
you should be receiving a letter any day right now. That's mm -hmm. only those that have financially given your all a letters there or it's on the way right now. But um, so in, in this book, what I'm trying to attempt to teach is the, the physical parallels, right? So in the dream, um, I the girl was off balance. Yeah. And so I helped her. I helped her take her left hand to her right toe, right hand to the left toe. And she looked at me, she goes, oh, I've been made fun of all of my life because I couldn't do this. And she goes, oh my gosh, I can do it now. And I just woke up just, oh, I was just crying because I knew it wasn't that. What the Lord was showing me, Gina, my church is so off balance and, and they're missing it. And many of them are being made fun of because they can't figure it out. But I want you just to teach them to find their balance and then they won't be made fun of anymore. And, and, and that's, that's what I want you to know. You're not going to be made fun of. Like we're just, we're teaching you things where the witchcraft and the sorcery, remember the definition of witchcraft, please stop with the Jezebel. It's true. Yes, it is. But I love what Gregory Wark, I forwarded his teaching today. We both did yeah. um, on Kim's platform yes, today. You know, awesome. you know, he told us he was going out there to do boots on the ground with, with Kim's ministry and, and with uh, the den. And uh, his message yesterday was so phenomenal, but I loved what he said. I've always said the, the physical and the spiritual parallel. Amen. Yes. Smelling weed right now just came to my nose. So I'm rebuking that in Jesus name. Um, yeah, so we, 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 the yeah. spiritual and the physical parallel, right? And, um, what he said on his show, I loved it. His broadcast is he said, um, the truth and, and the, the spiritual and the physical are twin, have a twin. Oh, the spiritual has a twin in the physical. The spiritual has a twin. I love that. Greg, thank you for that. I'm taking that brother because there is that there is a twin in the physical. So we all say Jezebel spirit, but listen, we could have that in our own hearts. If we have control, which is the fear of losing something, we too are robbing God. We can call it out on the preachers, which we did go back on our things. We've been teaching on the, the, the teachers, the priests, the prophets. I had said the prophets and the apostles that are going to be removed from the, you know, I said the PA, the PA system, the prophets and the apostles, the PA system. They're going to be removed, specifically the prophets and the apostles. You're going to see them come down that are yeah, are really operation. destroying the body of Christ. We did all that. So, but that this message is about us now. And I love what you said about about how they got into it, how they might have, you know, been a really good uh, apostle, have a good heart pastor, and have a good heart in the beginning, but then they mm -hmm. had to build up this major, major network in this this big, you humongous following. They had to keep the wheel turning. Then all of a sudden. Now you got to keep put. Now you got to do the dog and pony show. You got to bring other other entertainers in to yes. entertain your flock. Mm -hmm. And now it's all about the money instead of yeah. And and we did. We taught a lot on that. And I've already put out the you know four one one to the the preachers, the fivefold ministry. You better be careful. The heads better bow or heads are going to roll. Um, mm -hmm. And we've been hearing Fox News use yeah, that same close. use that same tagline. But, but what we're teaching right now is our team Unbreakables, our listeners of our ministry. We, we want you to be financially blessed. We want the wealth of the wicked to be stored up for you, the righteous. We want the transfers of wealth, the, the season of Issachar, those who know the times and the seasons, they're wise. The satraps that are around the kings, like I, I preached on our other messages, that are around the, the Daniels, that are around the kings. And God wants to place us around the kings. Uh, however... Unless we can look at our own hearts, we do hold the keys in our own hearts. But we're not going to be able to unlock these treasures of heaven, these mysteries of Christ, if indeed our own hearts are contaminated. And so we must say, is there any witchcraft, any control? Are we being asked to give, but we're fearing that if we do, we're going to lose something, right? Now, I'm going to talk about some marriages as well. It's not just in the area of money. That is what this contaminated finances is about. But I feel like the Lord, this message, Pastor Brian, there's there's more. There, I'm going to go through all these keys in the heart, and that'll probably be next. It's going to have to be next Thursday. But I promise the Lord I wouldn't rush through this because I want us to all get this. What we need to understand is if there is disobedience, you know, if we have this heart issue and a controlling spirit, you know, I, I was preaching this a part of this message um, and a, a, we were listening to it on a YouTube, right? And one of the messages I touched on the sorcery. And as soon as I spoke out that um, 
the this Jezebel spirit, this controlling spirit wants to bring down the men and the church, this spirit started screaming in the body of Christ that I was in. They were screaming. But do you know this church in Corona what, that I did this financial um, seminar in? Let the girl keep screaming because, oh, she's so nice. She goes to our church and no, no, she has a demon. And these churches are allowing these controlling, these demonic, these spirits full of witchcraft and sorcery to stay in the church, to stay in the pews and contaminate the whole message. And, but I'm telling you, we, I, I have another message on YouTube, quickly remove the women from the front door and some foolish women got on YouTube and made stupid comments and on Facebook, but, um, cause they don't know what they're talking about. Put, hashtag put another chicken in the crock pot woman. But, um, what we're talking about are women working the front doors because they're so sweet and they're hospitable. And we had a meeting with Gregory Work. We, we talk, we're talking with our brother, Greg, and, and I told him this and he said, Oh my gosh, Gina, that is a phenomenal concept because he's a warrior. He works with warriors, right? Mission force. And he was saying, I've never thought of that. Remove the women from the door. Yeah, get them away from the front door. Oh, welcome to Chupa Love Mission International. We love you. And we've got a chicken in the crock pot for you. We cooked your meal. No, get the women out of the front door because the terrorists and the demonic, those that want to destroy the message, destroy the preacher, kill the preacher, shoot the preacher, destroy the messenger, they come into the church. And so you have to have warriors at the front door that can discern. That's that's what I was going to say. Like uh, the last church we're at, I had to throw a demon possessed woman out. And you got in trouble by the elders and the pastors. Well, there was a you guy. You were called into a meeting. There was a guy that spoke up and said, you know, that's not right. I said, well, you can go with her. You can go too. So, so go ahead and get go to, ahead and go too. Get to step in because you're out of here too. So let's throw both of them out. Yeah. And, but, you know. And, and then and, it went around the church that Pastor Brian put laid hands on someone and took them out of the church, which... So the enemy will always take truth. It's a Leviathan spirit. He took truth and twisted it. You never laid hands. Thankfully, our um, gal, two. Tammy, was there, happened to be there with you. The two witnesses. And watched you. Yeah. Never laid hands, but you laid some words and said, get out of the church now. So because now the church is ignorant, demons. they allowed her to They actually invited her back. The one that Pastor Brian kicked out, they invited her back. And then the church that... Uh, kicked us out. They told us, you don't need to be the pastor. We're going to hire a pastor. We don't need you in here. You're the associate pastor. You can go now, Gina. So they hired a hireling that works part-time. And um, that girl actually still attends the church. So now they've got a demon. And I'm telling you, the churches are a mess. We are going to tell stories yeah. that are going to blow you guys away. Yeah. And the reason why we're telling them is because these are real. So people can learn. Yeah. We're like law and order. Dun, dun. I love law and order because I love, I love the law. And I love minds and I love the psychology behind catching criminals. I, I should have, I could have literally like been a detective on the streets too, but now I'm a detective for the church. But I love it because they'll say, these are actual events, but the names and the places have been changed. You know, so we're changing the names and the places, uh, but the fools really are, these are really true, true foolish stories that we tell. So nobody's like, what are they grabbing these stories from? But, are the real stories. Yeah, these are the real, real stories. Yeah. But this is where... By the way, the guy I threw out had a, two phones. Give me two phones. He had prostitute phone? One for his wife and one for his hookers. True, no, we're not lying. True story. No lying. Hashtag hooker phone. Yeah. Hashtag hooker phone. Get out of here. Yeah. But then they didn't want us to come back anymore. The, the hired, if you want to call worship leader slash bar singer, said, what are you we're doing? We're going deep tonight. He said, what are you doing here? Why are you here? You must have a motive. But, you know, the enemy will always speak out of the... And these are Christians, you guys. These are Christians. These are not non-believers. These are Christians in the church, in the worship, in the pulpits. Dang. in the They're in the church. They're in the child care. Masquerading. Do not tell me Trump was not needed in the politics. In Do not tell me he was not needed. He was needed in the White House, just as we are needed in the church house. We are so needed... And we are receiving so many messages from all of you. I, I mean, I'm overwhelmed. Thank you for stepping out. We're praying for you because you guys are treading on water that no one else wants to tread on. We're grateful that you're speaking this truth and love and you're holding the keys to this. And, and we know that, but we, are, we love the encouragement that we get because it's not easy and the attacks are great. Our, since we're teaching this uh, contaminated finances, our finances 
have been attacked mm -hmm. to the degree that they were just in a different way when we lost the property three years ago and yes. we were on the road. That's how bad our finances got attacked. Yeah. And Brian said to me the other day, he goes, you know, it, it, this is part of the journey, Gina. It's part of this message. And then when he said the message, you know, the Lord was like, Gina, what are you teaching on? You're teaching on contaminated finances. So I, we're going to pray. We're going to make sure on our time. I don't know what our timing is right now because I know we started 15 minutes late on the radio station. But we've only been on um, 40 minutes on Facebook. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I want to say this. You're going to be tested. Why are you saying that? Don't put that in the atmosphere because the Bible says so. Church is the most dangerous place to sit in mm -hmm. because, because the word goes forth sharper than a double-edged sword and it's going to divide. So if indeed we are teaching on sorcery and witchcraft today, we camped out on Malachi 3 verse 5. We just camped out on the first word. <laughs> sorcery and witchcraft is one of the ways we're robbing God. So we have been teaching that we're robbing God because we don't bring the tithe in the storehouse. But our listeners, we know, and people all around ministries that we speak to, you are giving, you're tithing, but your, your, your finances are being robbed and attacked. Why? One of the areas we're looking at is possibly, are we robbing God because we're still in control? I know many people, especially I know Pastor Brian completely emptied out his checking account to the ministry when we were just friends because God told you to, not I didn't say nothing, yeah. God told you to. You emptied it out to the penny, to the penny. And, and but, pennies. but imagine fear, you know, I have a daughter. I'm not going to be able to even put her back in my apartment if they take my apartment away because I can't pay the rent. There's fear, right? So what happens is the enemy operates in fear. He operates. That's the control. It's control. Again, write this definition down control. I've always talked about this when I'm counseling my clients. Fear is the control of losing something. What are you afraid of? I've counseled many marriages. They will not step out and do what they need to, need to do in their marriage. Why? Because they're afraid of losing the marriage. Fear is the control of losing something. Listen, you're already losing it when he's into porn or you're into porn. You're already losing that marriage when your children are being affected. You're already losing that marriage when they're smoking weed, they're drinking, they're not obeying God. They're, I mean, they're living like the world and demons are coming into your house. I'm not talking to Christian women that their husbands don't read Bibles with you. I'm not talking to Christian women. He just doesn't pray with me. Then get down on your face, intercede for your husband, begin to pray the word over him, lay your hands on your husband when he's sleeping. When you're making love to him, that's called worship. Begin to pray for him, not out loud. Don't be stupid. Begin to pray for him. That's how the word goes in. That's how you minister to your husband. So that's another story. I'm talking to about... I'm talking about wicked marriages, okay, where demons are coming in and destroying your marriage, and you're just allowing it. You're allowing porn in your house. You're allowing porn on their phone. You're catching them cheating, not once, not time, three, two times, but three times a lady. I think that's a song. Um, you're just uh, three times a man and a lady, or me a man and two ladies. You're just allowing it. Or a lady looks like a man. Or, a lady, or the dude looks like a lady. Isn't that a song, too? Um, but, oh, dear God. It's not funny. For the man or the woman that's actually dealing with yeah, this in their marriage. I'm not sure. trying to laugh because that's not funny. Yeah. But what you need to understand is what are you afraid of losing? You know, you're already losing it. Start obeying God. Do what God is speaking to you to do. Step out because sorcery and witchcraft is in your heart and you're not obeying God. And or you're tithing or you're giving, but it's mixed with sorcery and witchcraft. But Gina, how could you say that? I'm a believer. Well, I, did I just not give you the definition? If God says, why are you robbing me? He's not talking to the unbelievers, you guys. He is speaking to the believers. Non-believers can't rub God rob because God, they don't even know him. Do you, it's, it's, durr. I mean, it's just, you know, it's common sense. This, this is what I love about my life, okay? <laughs> Things are so simple. She keeps it so simple that... It flies over so many people's heads. Yeah. Like, it's just blatant. Like, um, you know, uh, I, I can give you so many examples, but, um, you know, uh, I can't even give an example. So it, I can give you so many examples. I can't even think of one. I got yeah, no, I, everything is an example. <laughs> yeah, actually, really. True. I mean, every single day. I mean, to the point of like, oh, I didn't even think about that. Uh, it's so in your face that we miss it sometimes, guys. We go yes. through the same repetition. 
the, mm-hmm. the, we go through the motions and we just do the same repetition, same pattern every single day. And we get used to things that aren't right all around us and we just accept it. But it's not It's right. unacceptable. You have two warriors here now that are saying it's unacceptable. We want God's best for you. We want you to be blessed, not in your mess. We need the house cleaned up. All you got to do is this. Ask the Lord. This is what I did in my young 20s as a young mom. You know, I stood in each room and I said, Lord, is there anything in this room that if you were to walk in, because you're, well, you're Jesus. Oh my God, you're Jesus. <laughs> you know, that your spirit, you would go, uh-uh, uh-uh. That you wouldn't be able to, because see, he has to turn with their sin. Now, sin is disobeying God. Really? Yeah, that's what sin is. It's, it's, it's disobeying God. Whatever it is he asks you to do, it's disobedience. So stand in a room and ask him, what is here? And if you have to question something that you think should be thrown away, gosh, I'm not sure about this. Do you know what I did? I threw it away. If I had to ask and I just wasn't sure, like, Lord, I don't want to be like, is there a devil under every rock? Is there a devil, devil under every spoon? You know, come on, you guys. Ask the Lord, is this okay? If you get a check in your spirit but not an answer, I would just get rid of it. Really, yeah, God, I mean, yeah. any child that did that, anybody that I've talked to said, well, I wasn't sure, Gina. So I just, I was like, wow, that's like immediate obedience. I'm so proud of you. Like as yeah. a parent or as a teacher, as a mentor or as a parent, I was like, wow, I'm really proud of you for doing that. So go through each room and ask. Mm-hmm. There are books. Oh, don't even get me started, you women, on those novels, mm-hmm. right? You're all of a sudden, you're taking your mind into a romance novel that's not your husband, but it's just a book. Burn it. Rip it up. It's in the homes. I know, I know, I know. Get rid of them. Don't sell them because now you're giving it to some other Lonely Hearts Club band woman, right? Okay, I I could just go on and on and on about all this stuff because God has taught me. I've done it. And so go through that house. Then after you've done that, then begin to ask the Lord, how would you like me to decorate this room? Because I have a women's Bible study or I have my girlfriends over for coffee and maybe they're hurting and they need... Ask the Lord, what do you want on the counter? What do you want on the windows? What is that stupid? No, it's not. Read about how the temple was designed. Read about the Ark of the Covenant. How about the the um, Ark? Noah's Ark. God is six. How about heaven? Oh my God, the streets of gold, the dimensions. Okay, I mean, there's proof all throughout the Bible. Mm-hmm. So why shouldn't our house be? And then, women, you're going to love this because you can tell your husbands, well, Prophet Gina told me this, um, and you permission to do this. After you've done that in that room, and you've had to throw away the curtains that your next-door neighbor gave you, and they actually smoked weed in that room, or, okay, right? You get what I'm going through, right, what I'm saying? And you can now say, okay, Lord, I threw away what the enemy was attached to, you know, or I brought those curtains from my room when I was single, and I slept around with every man and woman in that room. And I brought those curtains over. I need to get rid of those. So, Lord, I need you to provide me with the finance to do new curtains. Hello! Your husband is like, oh, my God, don't watch don't watch Gina's message. Don't watch it. No. But you got everybody get You get what I'm saying, Brian, right? Yeah, no doubt. Does it make sense what I'm saying? It makes total sense. I, mm-hmm. I remember I had a, like 50 boxes, guys, of this stuff that I've been carrying for 40 years of my life and it was just in storage and I, I lost uh, I mean went through a divorce went through a hard time in my life yes. just put all my stuff in boxes put it in storage left yep, it there for a couple it years mm-hmm. paid a couple hundred dollars a month just to keep it in I didn't even know what I had anymore but it was the old stuff I yes. mean old photos this and that but mm-hmm. and then Gina when I you know she she came into my life she's like why don't you just throw that stuff away I'm like mm-hmm. uh, that's my stuff yep, like, that's uh, I need to go through it and you know, it wasn't that I. There was just yeah a lot of a lot of I mean toys from when I was a little kid, things like that. But <laughs> memories, right? Hold on to memories. But I, I want to say this, guys. Like, the Lord will he if he if he wants to clean house, you can't take yes. you can't take your old stuff into something new, into the new future, no. into your new no. marriage. It ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna happen. Mm-hmm. You know, and and doesn't even have memories attached. Why be to attached it? to stuff anyways? Mm-hmm. We can't take the old cliche. We yeah. can't take any of this yeah. stuff to heaven. And I mean, it's just stuff, really. I just want to be clear. We're not saying there's a devil under every curtain rod. Mm, No. Please, that's not what I'm saying. I think everybody's mature enough, if you're watching this broadcast or listening to this broadcast, mature enough to understand God wants your house clean, 
we're talking about contaminated finances. We spent a lot of time on pastor so-and-sos and witchcraft in the pulpit. We spent enough time looking at other people and rightly so. Now we have to look at ourselves and now we have to ask, are, are, are our hearts contaminated? The first subject of today's broadcast, this is part three you're listening to, part four will be next Thursday, is my heart contaminated and my controlling? Had, did my pastor and church say, listen, the youth are going to summer camp, I need everybody to please just give $5, and you walk out of the church and don't give $5. Do you know that's control? Do you know that's not submission to authority? If that is your pastor and he is asking for a need and you don't take out $5, I'm not talking about the pastor so-and-so's, Brian. I'm talking about the pastors, the good pastors that are trying to raise money for their youth group. We just need everybody for $5 so we can you know, give a scholarship for some of these kids to go to camp. And you guys get up and walk out and don't give $5. You know what I do? I always give 10, not the five, but that's me. Cause I just above and beyond, like not just a obedient, immediate giver, yeah. but obedient, oh. obedient. I really wanted like, bless everybody give, oh, but, but I, it's so generous. You know what I'm saying? So it's control. Because you have the fear of losing something. That $5 was supposed to buy my Starbucks coffee after church, mm -hmm. which has over 500 grams of sugar. I'm gaining tons of weight. My stomach is really big and it's poofy because I drink sugar coffees every single day, all day long, every week. And sugar is a disease. Sugar is a chemical. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're gaining weight. Okay, that's for somebody out there. You want to lose weight and you're drinking Starbucks every day to stop drinking it, <laughs> you'll lose five pounds. But that was a free one. But okay, that was a free. It. You know, this is going through my mind while you're saying. <laughs> you're the one who taught me, I, I, guys. I, I. When we used to watch uh, Perry, well, we still do Perry Stizzle. We love Perry. Perry Dizzle. Kim Clement. Perry Stizzle. Perry Stizzle. And Kim Clement's ministry. We always sow something into the ministry. It's it's like, and you'll hear Gina say this once in a while. Don't dine and dash. You know, you go watch it. You know, one of these pastors and ministers, and that's their job. It's what they do, and you know, that's how they raise money for the family. That's how they live. Yes, me. oh, they're starting. In Jesus' and, name, I rebuke that. And 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 she, the one who taught me, you know, we're, we're going to tie it. Is that okay? Is that, girl, give as much as you want. Give, give everything we got in the bank. I didn't yes. Sit, like, God is going to always provide. You know? Always, always. You, 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 cannot, but, you always see, you cannot yeah. give God all that stuff. Absolutely. And so that's what we understand is First Peter said that the judgment has begun now. Okay, so how has the judgment begun? On Truth and Love Ministry International, because judgment is the ability to come to a sensible conclusion. Has anybody come to a sensible conclusion today on this broadcast? Has anybody felt judgment? Yes, say yes. I hope you say yes. I hope you say yes. Gina yeah. judged us. I hope you say yes. Yeah. Yes, because I've been granted revelation to come to a sensible conclusion. I've concluded that today the Holy Spirit has shown me that there's an area of my heart that sorcery or witchcraft is in my heart. And I didn't realize that it was also in my home that I've actually have domestic deities. That's why it's in the title. A domestic deity is something that speaks to you. A deity, it's like a God and it's domestic, which means your home. So ladies and gentlemen, you've set something up in your home. Men, you've got these weird artwork, you know, in your game rooms or in your man cave. And it's a domestic deity and it causes your wife to feel uncomfortable. You need to throw it away. You need to get it out. Do you understand what I'm saying? But you're asking God to transfer the wealth into your hands so you can go buy some more of that crap. I'm telling you right now, God is trying to clean the houses of our hearts and clean our homes. Because I do believe with where everything's going with the terrorism and ISIS and all of this, you guys, that there's going to be a lot of homes that are going to be set up as home churches. I, I really do. I believe there are going to be churches and on block after block after block. Like every other block, you're going to find that there's a church on your block. I really do believe that. Amen. And we did speak on um, the first message on part one, the three areas that ISIS has advanced in the church. We're going to conclude now because part four is going to be next Thursday. And I am really going to get into adultery. Oh, I said it. <gasps> adultery. We're adulterers. Wait till I tell you how God told us the church is full of adultery. And that may be some of our listeners right now. But last, last our part one was about the three areas ISIS, uh, you know, radical Islamic terrorists, they memorize the Quran. They die by the Quran. They die by the word. They live by the word. Number two, they die by physical training. They train themselves, all of them in formation, all of their followers. They are in unity and sync in one. And number three, their finances, they give their lives, their money, their property, their businesses, everything for money to fund their cause. So I really believe that God gave me a prophetic key that will probably go into Washington 
seriously this message that God gave me on ISIS and the church. And uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna storm the gates of, of of the White House, you guys. And we're storming a lot of gates right now. So we I know we probably have to come to a conclusion of this and tell our our team Unbreakables. Thank you for joining us. And I'm, I'm excited to break. Can you imagine the stories and the teaching we're going to get into next Thursday? Because we are going to bring stuff in that you're just not going to believe that is really happening in the church. And then how we can relate that to our own hearts. Amen, guys. Amen. Yeah. There's so much There's so much more we can talk about. But uh, we're, we running, will. we're running out of time. So until next Thursday, um, we appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in to our broadcast. And you know, whatever the Holy Spirit puts on your heart to to give to this ministry, we definitely appreciate you guys. And not just for us, we want you guys to get your blessing as well. Watch, test God, sow into good ground and see what yes. happens. Yes. Yes. You know, I'm gonna quick quick story before I go. The, the, what you talked about um, when when the Lord when the Holy Spirit asked me to uh, give up everything to the penny, that was one of the biggest major Breakthrough. breakthroughs. The Lord brought me from here to here, and He stretched my faith because I was like. I don't have, I don't even have enough money for rent at the time. So, but the Holy Spirit told me, give up it, give it everything and, and watch what I do. And I was just like, okay, God, I mean, part of me, part of me was like, is God really going to do something? You know, I yes, was fearful. Amen. I was fearful, but he came and delivered. Uh, a man handed me a thousand dollars, all hundreds. That day. The, yep. The very, yep. yep. The very day. I think and it was, was like the next day or something. Yeah. The next day. Yeah. Amen. And I was, I was blown away guys. I, I was so excited. I was in tears. So. You guys let God do something huge in your in your life and see what he does. Yeah. So and we just let's go ahead and pray over them and as we yes. end on KCWG as well. So Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, your Holy Spirit is the searcher of our hearts. We yield our hearts now before you, not yes. pastors, not preachers that have heard us taken our money and run. And we are releasing our hearts to you. Yes. Please, Lord, forgive us forgive us. For sins of commission and omission, Lord, things we've done and things we're not aware of that we do because of fear. In Jesus' mighty name, fear is just a simple sugar-coated word for witchcraft and adult and sorcery. So where there is sorcery and witchcraft in our hearts, where we've operated in control, we ask for forgiveness. Please, in Jesus' mighty name, right now, supernaturally, remove that portion of our heart that has been controlling because we're scared because when we were a child we gave something then we were we gave our last food at at school and then we didn't have any lunch to eat and we were so hungry but we gave up our food and couldn't buy our own food those kinds of fears that trigger they're they're triggers from our past so in Jesus name we pray for revelation for all of our listeners right now that you would show them why they're fearing why they're controlling, what they're afraid to lose. And when you give them that revelation, number one, we are now at our family meeting. You'll know what I'm talking about if they go back to the last message last Thursday. This is a family meeting, and we've all met at the table. He's brought us to his banqueting table, and his banner over you and over me is love. Perfect love casts out all fear. So we cast out the fear of giving in Jesus' mighty name. The fear of letting sin go, the things, fear of letting things go in your home, deities, uh, removing domestic deities from your home and from your heart. Let them go. And Lord says, I'm trying to get something away from you so I can get something to you. And then eventually I'll get something through you. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get something away from you. So please, I, in Jesus' name, obey him. Obey him. And let's deal with our hearts on this issue. Stop blaming other people and other Jezebel spirits. Let's look at our own hearts. Because in our own hearts, we actually hold the key to prosperity, not the preachers. Amen. Amen. Amen we guys. love you. Share this video, you guys. Amen. And if this message uh, blessed you guys, click on the donate button on the Truth and Love Ministry fa yes. uh, Facebook page. Or go to www.tnlmi.org. We thank you. Love you. God bless love you guys. Love you guys. God bless you.